Hello everyone, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls. And in today's video, I am going to be answering your questions. So I did post this on Instagram and Facebook. So I'm just gonna go through and pick out a few people and answer the questions. If you wanna submit your question, leave it down below. So let's see here, Tim Edwin Bush asks, having faith, uh, wants me to talk about having faith in tough times. I thought this was such a great, great thing to talk about, such a great idea. Thank you, Tim. Uh, overcoming adversity, making the right decisions admit, amidst adversity, dealing with the people and blockages that delay or prevent happiness, uh, moving on from darkness into light. So the first thing we should probably address with this is seeing things so uh, black or white, right? So dealing with the people, dealing with the people and the blockages that delay or prevent happiness. It's not other people who are delaying or blocking happiness. It's always us. And that's a hard thing to accept, <laughs> but it is always us because nothing happens without our permission. And if we're in a place of blaming, we're in a low frequency. If you're in a low frequency, you're not going to be able to create and you're not going to be able to come on up into a high enough frequency where you can have clarity about how to move forward, if that makes sense. So, but this whole having faith in tough times, overcoming adversity, it happens to all of us. And what was really funny is when that came in, when Tim submitted his question, I myself was going through, you know, a really, really rough time. Boy, have I been feeling these astrological shifts. I shared in another video that I have a Taurus rising. <laughs> and so I believe it's a Taurus rising at like what, one degree or something. And, um, I immediately started to feel really lost. Um, it felt like all my choices were not working. And I, you know, there was just a lot of things going on at once. And I was scared. I was actually scared. And when Tim submitted that question, it was the day that I just realized, okay, you know what? Stop everything. <laughs> stop everything. Stop the negative self-talk. Stop doubting yourself. And I personally, I have like the cushiest bed in life because I'm a maniac about having the cushiest bed in life. So <laughs> I went to my gorgeous bedroom that is my sanctuary and I like to lie down when I'm meditating. That doesn't work for everybody because they'll often fall asleep. But I like to do that because I like feeling like my spine is nice and straight and I'm supported and you know, there's a coziness about it for me. You do whatever works for you. But on that day, I decided to cut the story. And this is something that I think is a good tool for anybody. If you feel like you're spinning out of control, if you feel like things are not coming together, often it's because we're, we're pushing too hard and we gotta let go just for a minute, okay? Just let go. And so I'm lying there, I'm doing my meditation and I'm, I always have a conversation with my angels and <laughs> I flat out say, you know what's going on I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to feel like this anymore. I don't want to be scared. I want it to, let's do a cleansing. So just by being willing to stop and say, okay, I know this is a story. So cut the story, get back to you and the realization of who you are. And then if you can meditate, if you can bring yourself to meditate, sometimes you have to go for a walk to walk off the excess energy. Or if you're in a place where you're just angry or whatever. So in those cases, a moving meditation would work better, <laughs> right? But in this case, I asked for a clearing. And as soon as I got the clearing, you could do that with Archangel Michael, you could do a chakra clearing, however it works for you, um, but to do a clearing. And I kind of let whatever's gonna happen, happen. So I invite the angels and the archangels to come on in and to heal me wherever they see that I need to be healed. And in this particular case, Archangel Raphael came forward and put his hand over my heart and and, and I, I realized for me what that meant. And for you, it might be different. You might have a hand on your stomach or over your third eye or, you know, something along those lines. And let wherever you feel them putting their hands, let your attention flow there, okay? You're not trying to figure anything out. You're not trying to make sense of things. That's not gonna work. That's getting back into the story. Wherever you're energetic portals, okay, <laughs> have kind of gotten offline or however you want to see it, you know, let those things be restored. Let those connections be restored. And when you're done with that, then you can ask, okay, can you show me, you know, can you show me what is possible? Can you show me, uh, we're big on asking why we humans, and sure, you could do that. Why is this happening? 
you may not get a concise answer if you're working with angels because they're more about making sure you're not more upset. <laughs> it's not like they coddle people or anything like that. It's just, if it's not gonna get you clarity, they, they won't bring it in, all right? But if it might help you move on, it just depends on you as an individual, okay? So when you get that guidance and it comes on in, it might not be very, very satisfying. This is one of the things that really upsets people about <laughs> working with angels sometimes because angels are of a different frequency and they are our best allies. I cannot stress that enough. But we have these egos. The egos want to be satisfied. They want the direct answer. Just tell me how to live. And they will not do that because they will not go against your free will. But what they will do is help you see truth. They will help you see your potential. You can work with Archangel Shamuel to help you fulfill your potential. They will let you understand that where you are is perfectly fine. And if you get mad at people, <laughs> right? Um, it's just we want to be careful with that. You want to say it's because of that person that I'm not moving forward. That's not the case. But if you have some anger, let that be uh, flow, flow it away. Or if you have some resentment or whatever the emotion is, allow that to dissipate into the light. When you're getting your messages on how to go forward, it might be a message of today, you are to only do what inspires you. Now, some people might roll their eyes at that and say, really, I have to work, you know? <laughs> but what I mean is even if you're at work, you can sit there and ask yourself, as long as you have some, you know, maybe, maybe you got three things that you have to do, ask yourself, what am I inspired to do right now? Go towards that. It's very simple. It's very, very simple. And you're not going to like pop on out and be like, oh, okay, now everything is solved. It is a process, but that is how you can get through those lower moments is clearing yourself away and realizing sometimes you don't need to make a decision right now. Sometimes you're not meant to make a decision in this moment. Sometimes you have to wait a little bit. Now, if you feel like you have toxic people around you, let's address this. So a lot of empaths do tend to be codependent in some way. Yes, because we all have this feeling of, we have to save everybody, we're so sensitive to everybody's pain, we have to stop their pain because it'll stop my pain. Yeah, sit with that one for a second. And we wanna go out and save everybody <laughs> and you can't do that. So if you find, let's not call them toxic people. Um, let's just talk, talk them, about them in terms of these are not people who are meant to be here right now. <laughs> like maybe they invaded you or maybe they do have some bit of narcissism or, you know, maybe they're sociopaths. You know, I think the stat is that 6% of the population has some form of narcissism, but how would they know? Because narcissists don't typically go and ask for help. <laughs> All right. So they, I think that number is really, really low, but, um, I think, in, in spiritual terms, we have a lot of people who are feeder souls, who, you know, they've denied their own souls. It's not that they're evil, it's just the, that they had some event or something that scared them and so they're not living in their own light. And when, that, when their own light isn't expressed, they have to feed off of others who are just going around beaming all the time, like, hey, hi, <laughs> you know? I'm thinking of like little, little cartoon characters that are, you know, going around like, hi, I'm happy and I want everyone to be happy too, you know? But <laughs> in the real world, that just doesn't work and it can become um, sort of a cat and mouse thing where if you have to go to work and you have these people who just, you know, they're not feeding off of their own light, they're trying to get a piece of yours, remember nothing happens without your permission. So the first thing that you can do is shield and protect your own energy and, and say to yourself before you walk into that room with those people, if you have to walk in the room with those people, you will not have any of my energy. It's sealed, it's protected. Try to have some bit of compassion with these people because would you act any differently if whatever happened to them happened to you? Yes, we all make choices. I didn't have the nicest childhood. I had kind of a rough childhood as well. Um, and I, I didn't turn into a narcissist, but some people do. Some people, that's, that's where they have to go, okay? So I know that we could sit here and talk about this for 20 years, <laughs> but let's see here, um, let's go on. So going along that same thinking, we have Teresa Maria CA, uh, protection and clearing from negativity and or psychic attacks. Now. Do psychic attacks occur? Yes, but mostly what that is, is you're being sensitive and you can feel someone having negative energy towards you and it hits into you and we, we give way too much power 
to what somebody thinks of us or what we can feel from them, okay? Um, I myself have experienced psychic attacks or what we call psychic attacks, and it was horrible. <laughs> we don't need to go into the details, but it was absolutely horrible. And the thing that I learned from that was if I didn't care so much about what that person felt about me, that would have had no power over me whatsoever. So I know it's sort of conventional wisdom speak around our community to be like, oh, you got to shield yourself. I've said it myself, we got to shield your energy, you know, do that whole thing. Um, but really, we want to be careful when we talk about these things because we don't want to get into this energy of victimhood, that I'm I'm the prey and everybody is kind of, not that you're doing that, Teresa, um, but, you know, I know some people do that and I love that we're having this conversation now. Um, so you're not a victim, okay? Um, if it hits you, it's a lesson to be learned. Why does that person affect me? Why, why did I feel jolted by that? Well, they put their energy into me. Why are they allowed to put their energy into me? It's not like it won't happen. Trust me, I'm still going around going, oh, oh, how did I feel so icky coming out of that store? Or how did I feel so icky? <laughs> and then I, I remind myself, I'm letting that person have too much power over me. It's not easy. Okay, especially I'm a feisty Scorpio. You think I don't want to like be like, da 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 da, you know, like you want to have conflicts. Okay, I mean, I don't really like it, but living in New York City, you, you know, that was kind of the survival manual was to, you know, make sure people know to not mess with you kind of thing. So I think it's still deeply ingrained in me, but this protection and clearing from negativity or psychic attacks, you gotta be strong within yourself. That's your best protection. And yes, again, we're talking about like you put the light around you and all that stuff, but really what that is, it's a visualization for you to feel protected. And, and the angels are like, oh yes, she just said it. She just said it. Most of the stuff that we learn to do, the rituals and what have you, I'm gonna be doing a video to put on Gumroad about invoking angels. We'll talk about all of that. But um, <laughs> these are really things for our human brain to kick us into spiritual mode. The angels don't need it. And there are people that believe in it so much. Like, and we're talking about rituals to get away from negativity and protection rituals. People believe in it so much that they will fight me on that. I'll get negative comments maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It's okay. I mean, I'm, I love you. I do love you. Um, but that's the messaging that's coming through. We don't need, they're saying, we don't need you to do this thing where, you know, you, you light all these candles, even though that helps keep your space nice and clear, but that's you keeping your space nice and clear. So the power is with you, right? If you feel better doing a ritual, protection ritual, you know, find out what, I don't personally do that, but if you feel like you want to do that, then you can look up, you know, someone's ritual on that. Um, but really, it, it, the power, you have to get your own power back. And that might mean you don't belong here. That does not pertain to me. That's not mine. Take it back. And I actually had a conversation with somebody one time where they were trying to put all their thoughts and beliefs and doing a red herring kind of <laughs> argument or taking it off somewhere else. And I was like, uh-uh. And then coming back and slamming me with stuff. And I'm like, that's yours. Take it back. And he literally looked at me like, and in a way, energetically, I was under attack by that person. But because I said, no, take it back. He didn't know what to do with that. So there's a lot of that. Of course, meditation, uh, you can do that as well. You can also, if you feel like somebody is psychically attacking you or just being negative, um, if you want a visualization to help kind of spark that feeling of protection, of course, there's Archangel Michael. That's a given, <laughs> right? But you can also uh, surround yourself, as I said, with light or like hematite, you know, seeing yourself surrounded by hematite and reflecting back you know, whatever's coming at you with love. That's the, that's the difference. You can't do anything out of spite or, you know, I want you to have a taste of your own medicine. But when someone is invading your free will, okay, then you have every right to say, not mine, and reflect it back. And if they're having a hard time getting it, to some extent, again, you want to be very, very careful with this, but to some extent, you can let it come back to them 10 times over. <laughs> um, but again, be careful with that. Make sure you're not doing it out of spite. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not going to bore you with more examples, but I'm just thinking of times where I've done that. And it's not to harm the person. It's just, please see it. Please see it. I want you to see it. 
So the last thing I want to say on that question is let's be very, very careful about what we're defining as negative. Because sometimes if someone's actually like in front of you being abusive and okay, that's not so nice, right? But if someone is just grumpy, <laughs> right? And they just don't realize how they're coming across, we might start to judge them and go, oh, you're just being negative. Oh, you just made me feel bad. No, you allowed them to make you feel bad, right? So it goes into that empowerment thing. Remember, you are your own best protection in that way. If I didn't answer that completely, ask follow-up questions down below, feel free. Um, let's see here. Do, do, do. Okay, so I had a couple of people ask the same question. I'm not doing the Instagram questions today. If I end up pulling up, you know, in a separate video, I start pulling up the Instagram questions and they repeat, is fine, whatever. <laughs> we'll work it out, right? Um, so we have Maria, is it Care? It's K-E-R-R. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Maria. <laughs> uh, I would also like to know if it's an angel or my own thoughts. So we're gonna get into that. I feel like somebody else asked that question as well, so bear with me here. Um, Sarah Marcel, mwah, hi. Uh, not sure if you have a video on this already, but tips on differentiating between hearing true guidance and just your own thinking. And Karen Vincent says, yes. Um, and I, uh, there's many, many comments here. So if I didn't, if you asked the same question, I didn't say your name, I am so sorry. <laughs> but how do you know when it's your angel and when it's a different, what I call an interloping being? Angels have a bluntness they feel peaceful, it feels like, again, the story just splits. That's how you know. And I'm an angel medium and I still have moments where I, I'm, I'm human, right? So I have an ego consciousness. And so there are times where I want something, what I think I want something to be so true that when they give me some guidance, I'm like, oh, it means this. And they're like, oh, come back, come back. Or I'll hear some guidance and an angel will be very, direct. Maybe that's the best word. They're very, very direct. Nope. Nope. Right. So part of what you need to be doing is asking the angels to come in and to let you hear them clearly and to protect you as you are listening to their messages. So, and they will. And if you don't have, um, some people will say that they don't have an ability to hear or whatever, you'll feel it within your body or there, you have some sensory something that's going to activate. Okay. So, and, and it'll feel negative, not negative as in like, oh, you're so negative, but <laughs> that's become like my thing now, like, oh, you're so negative. Um, not like that, but more, more just like that doesn't exist. It's negated. Okay. That doesn't exist. It's negated. So you'll feel something pull away. Also, the angels won't really be, they're direct, but not like in your face. Okay. I hope that I'm saying that right. Um, so there are times like when I'm getting messages in and it feels like right here in my face, that feels like another entity. That's a fourth dimensional being. And you can even say, are you an angel? But a lot of times I don't even have to wait for an answer. Uh, are you an angel of God's love and purest light? And they go away. Just like the very mention of it, they just disappear because they get negated. And then the angels kind of stroll up. Are you ready? <laughs> All right. So that happened. Are you ready? So you'll be able to feel it. You'll hear it. And what you really need to do is start trusting your own instincts because everybody is wired to have a phone line, a phone line to daddy. Okay. Whoever daddy or mommy. Okay. Daddy, mommy, goddess, God, whoever you think of in that way, that higher power. Everybody has a phone line, so to speak, <laughs> right? to that entity. So, and, and to that entity's messengers that were built to be a little bit closer to us so they could be a nice bridge between, you know, the divine and this earth plane existence. So you will feel a sense of purity. You will sen sense peace. You will sense love. It's a lot of love. Now, some people that gets a little tricky because they won't allow themselves to feel love. And in that case, for those people, the angels might feel like almost like they're in a glass bubble and there are these, I see the beautiful lights, but they're just beyond the glass kind of thing. Um, I, I say, break it, pull over on that, you know, pull that emergency hammer out and break that glass and get it gone because you don't need it. Now with your angels and archangels. Okay. Now, if we're talking about guardian angels, guardian angels, you typically just about everybody I've ever read for, they typically have one that's very, very close to them. And then they have one that's sort of like mission control. <laughs> that's the best way I can put it. They're a little bit quieter. They'll come forward if you want to talk to them, but they're kind of more back in the, 
handling whatever your sacred geometry your sacred blueprint like controls i don't know how that works but <laughs> they're usually back a little bit and then as things start to happen in your world you might have more helper angels come forward and then of course we have spirit guides spirit guides are even closer to you in frequency than your guardian angels so sometimes it is your spirit guide that is trying to talk to you. But just know if you're invoking angels, you're asking angels to come forward, it's a very different feeling. You might feel buzzy. Some people get a warmth over them. Some people have reported being cold. Um, there's a difference between cold and crisp. <laughs> okay. <laughs> crisp is refreshing. Sort of like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm in the fresh air. You know, that's something different them feeling cold. If you feel cold, that's probably like a, a fourth dimensional entity that's coming by. Okay. So careful with that. And guess what? Don't freak out. It's like, oh my gosh, is my house haunted? Yeah, it is. Everyone's is. You think there aren't beings going back and forth? Like maybe they got a glimpse of me and they said, hey, I like, I like her accessories. I don't know. <laughs> but like, that's happening all the time. So yes, can you have interference? Can it sound like you're in between radio stations? Sure, definitely. But how you tell is really, or one of the ways that you can tell is really trusting whatever your extrasensory ability is. Everybody has one. It doesn't mean you have to go tap dancing with it down the street or whatever. It's just for you in some cases. But whatever that is for you, whatever your comfort level is, trust it. Trust it. Discover that part of you, all right? The other thing too that you can tell where between like ego and angels is that angels are really okay with ambiguity, <laughs> all right? They're, they're really okay with that because they're seeing a bigger picture, right? And you know, they might say, don't worry about it. It's all gonna work out. And you as a human, you're like, how? How's it gonna work out? Are you kidding me? Because right now it's not worked out and I don't like that, um, <laughs> right? So the angels will kind of come in and they're soothing. They don't coddle, but they might soothe you and say, okay, here's some guidance going in this direction. But again, it's that sense of peace and calm and, you know, they're not gonna get you excitable. One of the things that really upsets me as an angel medium are fake angel mediums. It's bad enough to have fake psychics or people who are doing parlor tricks and trying to dazzle people so they'll keep coming back. Um, but when you have an angel medium that's claiming, I haven't met too many of those, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> They're usually somebody who's in a, some other sort of art, um, esoteric art, and they try to switch over to angel mediumship. I mean, I don't video on that maybe later. I don't know. Comment down below if you want another video on that. But, um, you know, the, I, I've heard some of the, well, actually I've heard from people, they've come to me worried, worried sick. They say my angels are saying that I'm going to die in three months. My angels are saying that blah, 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 blah. Those are not angels. Aw. So the bottom line to answer that question, how do you differentiate? Um, it's really down to, I think for most people, it can come down to how you feel. Um, you know, angels are never going to tell you something that completely freaks you out. They might tell you something you don't want to hear. Right. Um, and I've had people like when I do readings for people, if they're like, oh, I know this person's my twin flame, just validate that this person's my twin flame. And I'm like, actually, we should probably have a big conversation about that because here's the deal. You're vibrating, pieces of your soul are vibrating in many different places at once. And if you're going to have a twin flame, it's probably going to be more like your your higher self, you know, there's a lot of spiritual concepts that we as humans, we, we try to put a nice, neat little story around it, but we don't have the whole of it, right? Um, I don't have the whole of it either. And people believe as they believe and that's fine. But again, on the whole twin flame thing, I've seen too many, too many detrimental actions from that belief system. So that's why I'm like, eh. and even from the first time I heard it, I was like, <laughs> wait, what? Um, but anyway, again, we don't have to talk about that. But what you might have as a message from angels, it's not going to interfere with your free will consciousness. It's not going to tell you what to do. If you guys want to know what it's like to be an angel medium, they'll flood me with, I don't know, I, there's no words for it, but I just get flooded with this information and I can see within a fraction of a second, someone's entire life. I can see and feel and everything. You know, I, I get the whole snapshot of their life. So when someone comes to me and says, tell me about my twin flame, let's talk about where you started to think that you had to have just one person in your life 
to complete you. Let's go back to that thing that happened in your childhood. Let's look at that. And people hate that sometimes. <laughs> really? I mean, they hate that. And they're like, oh, you're a fraud. You're no angel medium because you didn't tell me, you know, you don't believe in that. And so blah, 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 blah. You know, they start jumping to all these conclusions um, about what's coming through. It's unfortunate because if you hook into this angelic energy over here, and if you can think for yourself and just take the guidance and then contemplate it, let it flow through you, allow the angels to show you what is possible, what direction you can go in, who might be a good love partner, all that stuff. They answer your question. They just don't do it in this kind of low frequency way of like, oh yes, that boy is supposed to be with you. And oh, he's coming back. I cannot, I actually just was watching some videos. <laughs> this kind of goes into, you know, how do you know it's angelic energy or your mind? But we're also talking about how do you know when somebody else is actually channeling angels or whether they're just coming from their mind, right? We'll get into it. So I was just watching some videos. I saw there's tons of new YouTubers coming out there. Everybody's a card reader now, but I was watching this one <laughs> reader and the whole thing was like talking to one person. Sorry, God bless her. I'm not trying to like, you know, be negative about her, but it, it, I just think it's a good example. And it was a very, very needy kind of reading. So that what I mean by that is it was like, oh yes, he's coming back. He, who he? Who he? If you're supposed to be so good at the details, <laughs> who he? Okay. <laughs> so, you know, and, and, well, I shouldn't laugh because those readings can be very, very dangerous because of whatever she's tuning into is not good. I mean, it's not evil, but it wasn't it was like, wait, are you listening to like Aunt Betty give everybody readings? Because Aunt Betty just knows how to make pie, but she's not here to tell us how to live our lives. She shouldn't be telling you how to live your life, much less everybody else, okay? <laughs> but because they can hear something on the other side, they're like, ooh, special, ooh. Um, <laughs> anyway, this whole reading was like, he's coming back. It's gonna, oh, he loves you. You don't know that. Really, for thousands of people that are watching you, you know that. So when you watch something like that, this is actually a good exercise. Um, so that you can discern for yourself when you're getting your own guidance, what feels like, okay, that's angelic and what is sort of meh, right? Watch one of those videos. Again, no hate. I'm not trying, I know I sound a little hateful. I don't mean to be, <laughs> but watch one of those videos and pay attention to how you feel. If you come out of any messaging, whether it's coming from another individual or you're getting it for yourself, if you got, come out feeling anxious, stressed, he's coming back, Maybe that triggered somebody who was in a horribly abusive relationship who has a restraining order against somebody. You can't do that. I mean, obviously they can, they're doing it, but it's not right, okay? Um, we gotta be careful with people. We don't wanna put them in more fear. So if you're anxious, scared, uh, that's not an angel, okay? <laughs> or if it feels like, I almost wanna use the, the sentence, like almost feeling like you're coming out of your skin, like you're being turned inside out. Um, and I know that I'm just trying to give a visceral kind of to, to explain that. You know what I mean? Um, angels don't do that. They, they don't judge you. They don't tell you you did it wrong. They may not give you all the details because they're not supposed to interfere with your free will choices. But if you can take what they're saying and, and sit with it and then watch how things open up, they're really big on synchronicities. So when you're on the right path, really beautiful things start to wake up for you. But if you can start practicing doing watching something like that and maybe maybe it's a tarot reader that you're watching let's just get deeper into this exercise right so uh let's say you're watching one tarot reader and maybe they're reading like how i just described and then you watch another tarot reader and this person seems warm and genuine and you just feel like you know when you're sitting with a good person maybe they're not channeling angels necessarily but when they you feel like you can just like sit in a nice cushy chair and just listen to them all day. That's a good sign, right? That's a good sign. Yes, there could be people who trick you in that way too, but you know, you have a sense about that. Something won't feel right about it. We're talking about your own thoughts about the ego. The ego beats, the ego is not evil, but it, it will tend to get very affected by uh, sort of the electromagnetic resonance of others, of things, circumstances. A circumstance has its own life. Okay, it has its own energy. That's why we get upset about a situation, right? So um, that ego will kind of react in fear. So if it feels like it's fear-based, desperate, that's an ego thing. If it's like expansive, possibility, love, 
peace. That's angelic energy. So we're just going to leave it there for now. I'll take on more questions in other videos, but thank you guys so much for your feedback and I'm sending you so much love. Take care.